Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to the lagoon. Welcome back to the tiny garage, everybody. Uh, for those of you who enjoyed the focus on the Porsche 996 oil system over the last two weeks, a small update on that. A lot of you mentioned a couple of brands in particular. One of them would be Phil996 mentioned the Driven Oil brand, which you can get in America. But a bunch of you European types mentioned Miller's Oils, um, specifically uh, Muttley 4S, uh, also Pig Monkey, hey Pig Monkey, and Lee Jenkins uh, all mentioned the Miller's Oils, which you can get that in England, obviously, uh, Russia, uh, Africa, even the Falkland Islands, but you can't buy it in America, so lucky you guys. Uh, another thing to mention is also the viscosity level, the thinnest oils, so to speak, were the oils recommended by the Porsche dealer here in California, and that was zero W40 weight oil. By far the most common weight that you all mentioned was 5W40 weight. Uh, Valhalla, hello Valhalla, mentioned that in Europe that is the new recommended weight for the uh, Porsche Carrera. Uh, and then the thickest weight was 10W50 recommended by Lee Jenkins at Hartec UK. That's the Miller's oil weight that they put into their cars. And so that is a pretty good recommendation. Anyway, eagle-eyed viewers will know from the oil episodes that I got the cylinder heads back. Let's go see what that means. This week, we need to put the cylinder heads all back together again. This site will be a familiar one to regular viewers. This is the local car wash and we're cleaning the cylinder head covers. However, the professionals use something more like this. This is a $16,000 Snap-on PBC 58 parts washer. I brought the cylinder heads to HGS Machine in Escondido because they have a PBC 58. And this is the before picture. And this is the after. In addition to a deep cleaning, the machine shop also skimmed three one thousandths of an inch of metal off of the combustion side of the cylinder heads to make them completely flat. We know from episode 21 on blueprinting that three one thousandths of an inch is about 76 microns or about the thickness of a human hair. Very small indeed. Feast your eyes on the after shot. Thank you very much, Casey and Ryan and the team at HDS Machine in Escondido, California. First up on our new quick bench is the stands for the cylinder head that need to be 12 and a half inches apart. Thank you, Lee Jenkins at Hartec UK for recommending these awesome simple devices. To lap the valves, we're going to need a valve lapping tool, which is this wooden stick with the suckers on it. And then we're also going to need the grinding paste. This cheap Permatex stuff is the one that they recommend at the machine shop and everyone seems to use. And so I'm going to use that. Here is the cylinder head cover for bank two. And why we care is because of this number, R4545. That number is not particularly special, only it's on all the bank two parts. And that's the way that we know that this cylinder head here, R4545, is bank two. I would like if you would hit the like button. Okay, we're ready for some valve action. We're going to start off by taking a look at the valve guides on the intake valves. That brass tube there can get worn out, like the hole gets bigger from the valve going up and down. The machine shop did check all of the valve guides already and found them to be in great shape. But a quick way to test, so I'm told, is you can just put some oil and putting some WD-40 down this freshly cleaned valve guide. Then you put the valve up from the bottom there. Then you can put your finger over the top of the valve guide and pull on the valve and you should feel suction. In absence of a machine shop, this test could be a way to get a rough insight into the condition of your valve guides. We're going to need our stick now. Let's take it out of the wrapper. 
Now, it does have in there this little rubber band, and there's no mention of what that's for. If anyone knows, let me know. I've got a microphone there so we can hear the grinding process. Here is the grinding paste. You can kind of see the little grit in it. It's like liquid sandpaper. Pretty sure that's too much I put on there. Um, you don't really need that much. Here, we'll have a quick listen to what it sounds like when you first start. There it is after five minutes. It's kind of a higher pitched, more ringing sound to it. So that's what it sounds like after five minutes. I'm moving next door here and I'm going to do the same sort of thing, but I'm going to do more time. So we're starting off by the same thing, five minutes by hand. And then at the end of the five minutes, I'm just sort of cleaning up a little bit of the uh, grinding paste and then reapplying fresh grinding paste. And then going for another five minutes for a total of 10. So here's what 10 minutes sounds like. Let's compare that to five. Obviously, five minutes is much more gritty. Here's on the right hand side is the five minute valve. On the left is the 10 minute valve. And you can visually see that the 10 minute valve is better. It's much smoother. I did find that much more than 10 minutes didn't really seem to make much difference. I'm using an eight times loop here to check the valve seats. And the story is the same. 10 minutes, good. Five minutes, OK, but not quite enough. And so 10 minutes is the magic number. I decided to try and cheat. I put the lapping tool onto the chuck of my drill. Running the drill at low speed and changing the direction every 30 seconds was a great way to remove quite a lot of the rough material. But I did find that the hand method gets a much better, much smoother finish. And so in the end, I came up with this. Two minutes with the drill, followed by three minutes by hand, a total of five minutes, gleans pretty much the same result as 10 minutes by hand. Reducing that time from 10 minutes of valve down to five minutes of valve means that the 12 valves in this head will take one hour to do instead of two. You know it. It's subscriber rides time. Our first subscriber rides contestant is Martin Cutler with his 2007 Ferrari F430 with the F1 transmission. Hello, Martin. Martin lives in the village of Farnsfield in the UK on the edge of the Sherwood Forest. Yes, that Sherwood Forest. Martin told me that he recently had all of that Rosso Red loveliness ceramic coated, including a PPF film to protect the front end from rock chips. Martin has had four Porsches in the past, including more recently this Guards Red 991 C4S. Lovely. When Martin is not living the dream in his Ferrari, you may find him risking life itself on one of these two-stroke GP bikes because Martin is a madman. When Martin is not risking his life on the track, you can find him driving one of these, which is a Boeing 737 for Amazon. Thank you for sharing your Ferrari F430 with us this week, Martin. I personally love that car. If you would like to be featured on Subscriber Rides, let me know. Hit the notification bell. It's up there. Yes, please. Good news, we've done half the valves. Bad news, the ones we haven't done are the exhaust valves. Let's get on with it. The original to-do list for the machine shop included regrinding the valves and recutting the valve seats. Once the machine shop got a look at their heads, they said really they were in very good shape and didn't need that kind of machine work. And there was a couple of spots on the exhaust valves that probably could be fixed with lapping. That lump of lava there is one of the things they were talking about, some sort of carbon deposit that stuck right onto the valve seat. If you remember back to the leak down test we did in episode four, it really is no surprise that these valves wouldn't seal if after all this cleaning, we still have these deposits sitting right on the seats. Take a look at that black blob right there. That is a valve guide for the exhaust. They all look like that. Take a look at the intake side. That's what they should look like, more or less brand new. Beautiful brass colored device, no cleaning required. 
In the exhaust side, while it's vexing that they look dirty, it's really this that matters. They're kind of sticky. If you look inside, see all that gunk? Our fancy cleaning machine didn't get to that. Oh, bright light. So what we're going to do then is spray some brake cleaner in there and then using this brush that I stole from the kitchen. Shh. It didn't melt with the brake cleaner and just going vigorous with it for a few moments came up with this. Surprising results with little effort. I'll take it. And then that made it just as smooth as all the intake side valves. Next up then, look at that. That is pitting. That is not good. Many of you said that I should replace the exhaust valves. I don't disagree, but I do want to see if they're saveable. So we're putting some WD-40 down the valve guides just to lube our lapping job. And this is what it looked like after five minutes. And really, it's very encouraging indeed. What do you guys think? That's the before right there. Definitely pitting. Very common on the exhaust side, I'm told. And then our five minute lapping job really kind of fixed it, which I was shocked about. That makes me feel confident that the combination of machine and hand lapping that we're going to use is going to work well. I continued lapping with the lightweight and portable Yogi's Garage powered screwdriver. Thank you, Yogi. Finishing those off with five minutes by hand and everything seemed great. What do you guys think of these carbon deposits in the exhaust valves? Do they matter? Should I wire brush them off? What about that casting there or that hard edge or that casting? Should I try to get those off? Let me know in the comments if you think it would make any difference. Hold on, what's the dog doing? Oh yeah, subscribe now. Delta says thank you. Okay, you've lapped yourself silly. How do you know when you're done? Well, here's a fun way to find out. The water test. As you can see, we're simply pouring water into the combustion chamber side of the cylinder head. And yes, you can't see it very clearly just yet, but there is a little trickle of water there. And as virtue would have it, if you look inside that intake port, you can easily see where it's coming from. And it's coming from the left hand intake valve on cylinder six. Knowledge is power, folks. All right, so I flushed that one out and decided just to keep on going for now. Got an L on that one for leaky. Could be something else. So on these ones, all I'm doing is I'm putting the spark plug back in, the old spark plug, not torquing it really, just making it tight. Then sticking the valves in, no springs or anything. Pouring the water in. Leaving it for a bit. Obviously, I cut that time out here. And then just having a poke around. And that one was dry, totally sealed. Same with cylinder four. I just felt very lucky. Then what I did is I went back to cylinder six, gave that five minutes. Tried it again, and bingo. I was shocked that that worked. I just thought that was a laughable test. I suppose if it can't hold back water, it won't stand a chance of holding back controlled explosions. Finally, I cleaned up all the charcoal deposits between the exhaust valves. And this is our final result. What do you think, folks? Certainly shiny, could be better. I know it's not perfect, but I think from a functional point of view, should be good to go. So there's our venture into valve lapping. And that whole approach really was guided by the fact that we brought those cylinder heads to the machine shop and their expert eyes told us really there's not a whole lot to do and we could fix the majority of everything. And it turns out we could make them look lovely just with lapping. And so that's worth knowing. The price of that for the skimming checking the uh, valve guides and then also cleaning it in their fancy snap-on machine was $85 total and really that was just worth every penny for the service I got but also the peace of mind from having an expert take a look at them before I got my dirty mitts on them. Hey look what just arrived from FCP Euro only the thing that I had hoped to make this week's episode about but it's a little bit late for that and um, I wonder what's inside. Well, okay, cool. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.
Hey, you made it to the end. If you're enjoying these videos, you may want to consider becoming a member like our newest member, Rio Padak in Estonia. Hello, Rio. Also, finally, I have a bunch of new designs up on the t-shirt store and there's links for all that stuff down in the description. And for those of you that made it to the end, let's go back to the lagoon.